Good morning, everybody. It is day three of harvest. So today, this should be the last official day of any bugs, typically, is kind of how it works. Jared's combine is not in the lineup. It's still up the other field. I guess I'm the only one who left my hopper dog broken. <laughs> So yes, it is um, August 12th here this morning, and uh, the crops are actually doing worse than what we predicted. I was thinking things were probably going to average that 10, and I don't think they're going to. We just cut all day yesterday on pretty much six bushel crop. Um, okay, I gotta. I, okay, I gotta. I gotta shut you guys off here so I can climb a ladder. Apparently, I gotta get some window wipes. That's on my bucket list of things to do for the weekend. And, uh, but we did, I'd normally put my shoes on there. We did bring our little vacuum because we cannot start the day without having clean carpet. All right. Oh. <laughs> This is how I like to start my day. <laughs> I like to clean cap. And I know you guys got a lot of questions. Like, Mike, you didn't do this with the fence ideal. Like, what's the deal? Very simple, the Fend Ideals did not come with carpet. Second, the Fend Ideals, I couldn't stay in the cab long enough to enjoy the, the comforts of it. Wow, Mike, what's that supposed to mean? Well, that pretty much tells you that I was, we, we did not have as near as good a start with the Fend Ideals as we've had so far this year. We've had a few hiccups for sure, but, uh, Oh, I got a little more here. There we go. You know what? I probably shouldn't have recorded all me uh, vacuuming this because if Ashen sees it, totally going to have a new job back home. The next thing you want to climb up, obviously, very important to check your oil. We have already done that and uh, things are good. Nice and clean. You gotta check your flag, make sure it's still holding here. We got a moth that spent the night. Don't know where he went. Uh, I just used air cedar hose and then I stuck some rebar, very crude, stuck some rebar inside it so that way it wouldn't uh, droop over so much. Reason why is because uh, this is the highest point of my combine. <laughs> and uh, if you were to ever come in contact with the low power line, such as these ones, these power lines, I have uh, done videos on these before. We can't actually get underneath these power lines unless we're right up close to the pole. But they sag too much. And when Brian was doing his, his spray plane pilot course... Um, they told him that from spring to summer, spring being cold, you know, and uh, summer being, you know, 30 some degrees, uh, the lines can droop up to six feet. I thought that was crazy that a line can droop six feet. But anyways, he said they can catch a lot of, or it can catch some uh, pilots. Did you guys hear a rooster? Anyways, it can catch some pilots off guard, which is not a good thing. And we don't want to be caught off guard, so everything is power line friendly here. Now that I've said that, let's get going. And then this is kind of like, I feel like you're in the Olympics, you know? You're like, okay, okay, get ready. <laughs> All right, so now we're just going to fire up. We've loaded up our monitor. This air compressor that's behind me, it's quite loud. 
not a big fan. So during the during the days, you just calm by and away, and of course this thing will air itself up. It's just, and you're like, whoa, what the heck is going on? And it goes, you're like, holy cow. <laughs> All right, now if I can just figure out what is cut and what is not cut out here. I know, it's about that bad. Okay, so let's engage. Here. Okay, All right. I'm going to do this first pass up against this fence uh, without you guys and uh, see you come back. Look at that. There's absolutely nothing out there. What is it yielding? Zero. Zero. Anything in the tank? A little ice cream pail over there in the corner. And I've gone just about three quarters of a mile. Uh, but the first bass is gonna be worse here, but it's not gonna be a great crop. I'm hoping four bushel on this one. as bad as last year. Four bushels on our cereals and two bushels on the lentils. In fact, we actually got some lentils written off already uh, by crop insurance at zero bushels. Zero. Not even one. Not even a half a bushel. Zero. Isn't that something? the rest of the crew will be coming shortly. I'm sometimes, you know, too tired to sleep, so I just wake up early and be like, ah, let's go, let's go do something. That's our yield. That's, that's active, that's not average. Again, hoping for four bushel. So that would be comparable to last year. Last year we had four bushel cereals, two bushel lentils. Uh, this year, if we have 10 bushel cereals, two bushel lentils, don't know what the mushroom's gonna go. It's kind of the wild card, but not gonna be. It's not gonna go well. I was hoping for four or five bushel, but I guess we'll see how it goes. We're just cutting out this power line. You can't see it. Well, there's a pole here and there's poles because you can't cross this power line. making it so that way when we're making this run we can turn before we cross the power line sample it's not bad I don't think it's I, oh. Oh, I guess I got off my seat just a little too much looking back to show you guys that sample Here a little bit. Not that we've missed very much in a three bushel crop. Oh, it'll back down. I kind of like to do it. it. Takes a while to get this engine RPM down. That's what I noticed. It's not like the other combines where it just drops quick. This one really is slow to come down. There we go. Let's try this again. 
Oh yeah, I don't know if I showed you guys this, but our uh, seat turns to kind of help you, you know, look in the back. But it equally goes as far the other way, but this kind of splits off. See? Nifty. It's a cool part of the day. <laughs> it's a cool thing we learned. Learned. Learned, Mike. Le <laughs> okay, all right, good. Guys, I haven't even drank my coffee yet. Give me a break, all right? Give me a break. Every Whoa, everyone just stop for a second here. What? Stop, stop the combine, Mike. Mike, stop the combine. What is that? No, not that. Those are horses. Is that? Shoot, I can't see to my window good enough. Is that a, is that, is that a, is that, is that, is that a donkey? You must get closer, get a better angle. I think that's, is that, that's donkey. That's donkey from Shrek. Huh. Well, I was gonna add something. No, they're not mine. Well, I guess we better get cut. Oh, we're all up and running here now. Windshield wiper is always in our way. We're in a fairly rolly field. There's some other, other combines down under that hill. New field, we're on a different field. On these combines, drop the line. Oh yeah, we're just kind of going through, we're all kind of talking about our uh, our uh, command arm here. Joystick, whatever you want to call it. Because you can program uh, some of these buttons, like this one. Any, any button I do believe with a number on it, one, two, three, four, and then there's some more back here, you can program to whatever you want. So we we're just kind of talking about that and kind of how we like it. And I was actually asking them, you know, what do they think of it? It looks pretty, you know, it looks cool. But, you know, to actually get to all your buttons, you actually got to hold your hand up here, which is quite a ways off the console. And I kind of thought this little piece here would be adjustable to kind of move it up so that way you can set your, your, uh, your, your hand on it, but that's not the case. Yes, you can adjust this whole console but to my knowledge, it only moves one way. As it goes up, it actually goes farther out, and as it comes in, it lowers down. So if I want it up a little bit higher, I'm gonna be out over here. Meanwhile, your arm is stretched all the way out. So if you want it all the way down, then it's a little bit lower. So it's kind of odd that it didn't make two settings so you can go up, down with it, or in and out. There's another combine. But anyways, we're all kind of discussing that and we're all kind of drawing the same conclusion. Everyone that's running the new ones with the new command arms like, yeah, the jury is still out on whether we actually like it or not. Because Brian, my younger brother, he said that he jumped in the 690 there uh, and the 6 Series don't have this. It's only a 7 Series and the S and also the X and also the new sprayers. This is basically the new John Deere uh, command arm and everything. But we have some older combines that don't have it, they still have the old school ones, and he was saying that uh, he actually preferred that one. So, uh, I guess, jury's still out. You know, it's only day three. We'll give ourselves a little bit more time with it, but... I do have my line on it, my center line, and uh, my auto steer and stuff, and my nudges are all programmed into here. But I still use my nudges right here, and I use my center line because this is habit. I it's habit to go to the monitor because that's how it is for seating. You don't have all this for seating; you have it all in your monitor. So, what a wonderful crop, eh? Just beauty. Just a beaut out here. So yeah, there is eight combines out here, uh, but we're all dropping lines and we all skip passes. And uh, sometimes, 
like it takes a long time to fill your hopper out here like if it's only doing four bushels you know <laughs> you got to do a hundred acres with one combine just to fill your hopper just to fill your hopper so you can go out and combine for a few hours without filling your hopper so sometimes you know we'll just start breaking up you know we'll hit a section a 640 acre field or maybe you go to a thousand acre field whatever it might be and you kind of just kind of block it out and guys just go up and down for a few hours and then the grain cart guys do they just sit and wait to get a clean sample when you're only running a few bushels here at combine but I wouldn't say it cleans as good as the Fend. Fend did a really good job but uh, eh, cleans like a John Deere <laughs> but actually it's not bad it's not bad I can't complain too much about it look at the crop we have to put through it if you want a clean sample you kind of need to put a few bushels through it that's kind of how it goes just kind of all over out here believe it believe it or not there is a method to our madness we do kind of know what we're doing sometimes <laughs> uh, we just about got this field wrapped and we're gonna move off so right now uh, when things are percolating uh, we've been hitting about that 2,000 acres a day we could probably do more but uh, moving does kill you. It takes a lot of time out. And then uh, once we really start moving, like I mean like 50, 100 mile moves, well then our uh, productivity is going to drop even more. Then we'll be lucky to hit a thousand a day. But uh, you're most efficient if you don't have to go anywhere. If you can just sit on like a big block of land, you don't have to move. Thank you. Just go up and down, up and down, up and down. You're most efficient. Every Thank time. you. So on the X9, when you shut off your uh, unload, it shuts off your drags and then it empties out your uh, your auger there. And once that spout tips up, it's done. Okay, it's done. There it goes. It's automatic like that. Oh, you can move your spout. Yeah, I didn't know that, eh? Yeah, I didn't realize I had a movable spout like uh, CNH combines, but uh, now I feel like a uh, Case New Holland. <laughs> all right we're moving out so we're gonna lift our wheels because they're down because they're in hydroflex mode hydroflex talking like a anyway you know what i mean you can just hold this up and i'll i'll lift them up here oh and they all go at the same time there it is all their wheels are up and we're gonna move don't forget about our hopper. Unlock. Oh, it's hard to do this one. Drive it in and down. Oh my goodness, everyone's always talking all the time. There it is. We're down. We are now congregating. We're waiting for the semi because 
we gotta make a move and we gotta take our carts with us, but they can't move loaded. So we're waiting for the combines to show up and we're waiting for the semi. All right, combines are here, trucks are here, they're getting offloaded, and we're hitting the road. See how easy that was, Mike? <laughs> Hold on. We had to go through a gate, and uh, the gate is only like 25 feet wide, or 30 or something. Maybe it's not even that wide, it might be 25. And you can't just drive through, you can't lift up over it, so you gotta tip in one angle, and then it's kind of curve it hard around. And apparently I did it the hardest way possible. <laughs> But anyways, moving these 50s can be a challenge, especially if you have a fence over here, which we do. And we have a fence over here, which we do. Pilot truck here is uh, moving awfully slow. And then of course we have road signs up there. Oh. And so on and so forth. We have to kind of maneuver around. Sometimes there's trees. And I don't know if I said this before, but I'll say it again if I did. The Ideal Combines had a way higher lift and a way better lateral. Like you could put the end of the header on the ground. That's how much lateral you had when it actually slid. Um, but the John Deere's don't have near that much range. So it is a little bit more challenging moving these with John Deere's. Moving these 50 foots, I mean. Okay, we just got to our other field here. We're gonna lower our wheels. It. There's no science to it. You just get it lowered a little bit, and then as soon as you hit your auto, they'll go back down. Our hopper topper is open. We're in first gear. We're going to engage. missed it but I just received a guidance track so how it works Roger, like, Lord, I'm Jake. Hold on one second here. Um, how it works on the ideal is you would set a line on the ideal combines and then you would share that line you would physically go in hit a button and share it on the John Deere system it's a little different you just set a line as long as you're all playing together which we well, only half of us are I guess because only half of us are new enough to do that, but uh, you just set your line, and then you, as soon as you go into your set track, it's already right there. Someone already set a zero heading, name of the field, and then all I gotta do is just tap that and say, yes, I want that line, boom. Now I got their line for whenever I wanna use it. And then, so say maybe I wanna make a 90 degree line, because I'm going 90 right now, I just go ahead and make a 90 degree line, that works for me, and it's already there for anybody else who might want it to be on the same line. So that's kind of how that works. So anyways, guys, that's kind of the gist of it. I think I've probably tarried on long enough. I don't want to make these videos too long. But uh, we're going to keep cutting here. And we've got another month or so to go. So stay tuned. There will be lots of videos to do. All right, guys. Adios, amigos.